the next method to talk about is the has cellu cellular connectivity, uh, which is the Boolean attribute. Let's take a look. That one would be kind of interesting to do some mind teaser again. So we can say uh, assert, we know that uh, a P that has cellular connectivity by default from the uh, default constructor will simply just be false. So I can say assert false. And then I can say P that has cellular connectivity over here. So we know that this thing here is simply just going to return false. And false can make assert false. It can be asserted to be false. So that's why you will pass. And this one over here is the same as this. Okay, let me try to, well, I'll help you a little bit to understand here. We know that p dot, uh, did I actually p dot has, right? I may have uh, named the uh, methods maybe a little bit different, uh, not in the way I intended. Let me take a look quickly. So if I go back to product class, Okay, interesting. Remember, okay, I just, uh, just let me distract you a little bit. Uh, you gotta make this change as well. You can see under the product class in the earlier video, this accessor has been generated automatically by the uh, J, uh, the J, the J units facility, right? Remember, we actually used the generate setters and getters. However, I'm not so exact, I'm not exactly happy with this particular, um, accessor over here so is it possible for me to rename it uh, systematically okay i can definitely do that uh i think for j units they uh for eclipse they simply add is in front of the boolean attribute over here i think that will work uh in some cases but it may not work always so what i would like to what i would like to do is to rename it systematically so click on the method name over here right click and then you want to say refactor and then rename Okay, rather than this, I can see, because is has, uh, English-wise, doesn't make sense. Why don't I simply say has, cellular connectivity, okay? So please make sure you do this uh, renaming. I think it's also a good chance for me to introduce the refactoring tool for you, okay? And hit enter, all right? So now every occurrence of is has, cellular the connectivity has been renamed to this particular method, all right? Let me now go back to test products and you can see this part here has been renamed as well. Okay. And let's now go back to uh, what, we, we, what we were left off. So P dot has cellular connectivity is returning false, the return value. False equals equals true will be false, which will be, which can pass the assertion for assert false, right? Makes sense. What about, what if I want to do assert true over here? So that's a mind teasers I would like to assign to you, but we can do it together, that's okay. How about the first one? What if I want to pass the assert true by this particular method call? What can I do? Okay, let me put it here. I know that this, oh, sorry. Let me just copy only this Boolean expression over here. Let me put it here. It compiles, but it's going to fail because let me just uh, show to you very quickly. If I try to launch it, right, you can see it fell. If you double click on the uh, JUnit test, right, it can tell you that, uh, let me just do it again. Uh, let me just double click to maximize it. If I double click on the test, it tells me that you can see if I click on the failure over here, it tells me it fell the assertion at line number uh, 26. It is because P dot has cellular connectivity returns false and false is going to make assert true to fail. How can we change that? So there are different ways you can do it, okay? Either you can say that, for example, you can say this should be false. It is equal to false, right? Or let me just try to uh, show different ways, uh, to, uh, show you a different way. Or false means it is not equal to true, right? You can say you can see this return value here is actually false. We know that very well. False equals equals false will be true, and false not equal to true is also true. Okay, let me just do one more. Okay, I can also rewrite this guy over here by this. I can say uh, not equal to true, right? Let me just uh, copy this one here. Not equal to true, so that means. It is not the case that it is equal to true. So I can also 
prove this. So these two are completely equivalent. Either you say not equal to, is, which is more like a relational operator, it is semantically, uh, semantically equivalent to, it is not the case that this return value is equal to true. All right? So far, so good, I hope. Right? It's a green bar. Let me just show you one more, just for fun. Okay? One more. And we can also simplify this into, I can say just that. So what does this mean? This simply means whatever value it is returned from this method call, I'm going to negate it. And then let's we'll see what a negated value is. So we know that this value here is going to be false. False being negated will give you true, which will pass the assert true assertion. Right? You can see we got so many examples here for assert, uh, assert false and assert true. Hopefully now you're getting better of understanding this. Let me maximize the tab. Let's go back. The next uh, attribute I'd like to talk about is the integer, uh, the double attributes. The price, discount value, and also uh, the original price, discount value, and the price. And we'll also test the two string method in a moment. Let's now, first of all, start with uh, the double value. Uh, for double value, uh, the, way, uh, the method you should really use will be the assert equals, which we spoke about already, right, here. And you should really put the expected value followed by the actual value. Let's now do it. So I would say assert equals, right? I will leave the expected value on uh, empty just for now. And which method do I want to call? I want to call p.get original price. And we know that because of the uh, default constructor over here, it's going to be 0, 0.0. If you simply do that, you will actually get some warning, which I would suggest not to ignore this particular warning. Let's read it quickly. So if you move your mouse over, they will say the method assert equals when you get double and double, right? You can see 0, 0.0 is a double. P that get original price is also a double. From the type assert is depreciated. Okay, so that and it, they don't they didn't really explain to you why it's depreciated, but at least you know that it's you should, it's not recommended you use it this way. What you should do is you should really put some tolerance level. Let's say 0 0.1. What the tolerance, the tolerance level can be adjusted by you, but I will typically put 0 0.1, sometimes maybe 0 0.01. Let me try to explain to you uh, over here by written, uh, writing that down. What we want to really compare is 0, 0.0 against another double value. So for us, the programmers, we are thinking in terms of the decimal, like a 0 0.0, 23.5, and etc. However, computers, they will, all, they will try to represent the decimal numbers in terms of the binary number. We know that in a computer memory, simply binary. So everything that human thinks will have to be turned into binary representation. However, theoretically speaking, I wouldn't go deep into the theory, but theoretically, theoretically speaking, decimal numbers cannot be represented perfectly in the binary system. That's a theory you can take uh, take for granted. So that we should always allow certain uh, imp uh, imprecision, which means the number that the computer will re return back to you may not be exactly what you would expect. You should really allow certain uh, tolerance that we call. Let me write it down for you. Decimal numbers when stored in the computer memory, which is binary, cannot be represented in binary perfectly okay instead we should allow for some tolerance okay tolerance of calculated result for example we should say plus minus 0 0.1 let me fix the typo and you can think about 0, 0.0 so that means any value that's returned from this method that's uh, maybe up to plus 0 0.1 down to minus 0 0.1 any number in that range should be okay so you might think in this particular case maybe it's not so worth uh, doing the tolerance but i would say just in general if you're doing some complicated results involving double values i think having some small tolerance uh range is definitely worth doing all right so hopefully uh you can accept that so this will be one, uh, one, one uh, assert equals for the double double uh, return value. And let me write down the one that's not so recommended for you to do. A very typical mistake you might write into is, like say, assert true. You might be thinking that, 
I would say assert true 0, 0.0 equals equals right p dot get original price. This will compile. However, I should really say not recommended because your relational operator over here equals equals should only be used whenever you want to compare either object uh, object addresses like what I did in the earlier video or whenever you want to uh, want to compare maybe primitive value especially integer that's typically the case but for double value you should not uh, compare them directly because that one will allow no tolerance but they should be tolerance for the reason that I put over here decimal numbers just cannot be represented perfectly in binary not recommended tolerance should be allowed all right so what i will do is i'm going to comment this out at com uh, command or control forward slash right let's now do the other two methods that also return double so assert equals and then 0, 0.0 and we can say p dot get discount value right it has also default 0, 0.0 and of course tolerance 0 0.1 and one more assert equals and then 0, 0.0 expected value p dot get price that will be the computation result but we'll get there uh for the later test 0 0.1 all right so these are so far let's make sure it sh it's always good you may actually put multiple assertions in a single test case but it's always a good idea to add for after every one assertion or every couple of uh of assertions you want to relaunch the JUnit test case to make sure you still get a green bar right before it's too before you got so many assertions by getting a red bar you wouldn't know which one actually fell all right so now let's now go on to the last one which I want to do for uh, the to string method and for the string value, you can you can uh, let's just use the assert equals. Okay, expected value. I'm gonna put it here, and also the p dot two string over here. Okay, and what should be the expected value over here? One way to do it is you can you can simply put empty string just for now. Right, so at least you will compile. We are comparing whatever the actual value is against this empty string. We are expecting this to fail, but for a reason. Let me just launch this over here. You can see we get a red bar, right? And then I want you to, if you double click on this particular test case, if you double click on that, it shows you that should be line 40. But let me just go back. Let me unmax, uh, maximize it. If I double click on the failure, it shows me this line actually fell and whenever the expected value and the actual values are actually a string you can dig deeper into the j uh into the j units which will be if you go to the top line over here double click it will show to you exactly what the discrepancies are you can see the expected value is simply empty string over here and the actual value from the method is this and we verify from the console application before that this is okay so we can simply just copy and paste copy here and by the reason I'm showing to you this uh, result comparison here is whenever you actually have this uh, have uh, assertion failure between two string values, you can always uh, double click on the first line and that will bring up this particular panel for you to compare. So you can see exactly how to fix. That's my main point. OK, I already copied this value here, right? Double, uh, highlight it and copy that. OK, and then I can paste it over here. Right. So that's uh, exactly the value I'm expecting. OK. Now we run the test. Now I get a green bar. Okay. So what we have done is we, we have done a pretty long test over here, but I try to show you all the assertions you should know, at least for now. Right? You got let me see, I got you got assert null, you got assert true, assert false, and also you got assert equals. So these are all the uh, useful ones for you to for you to know. There, there are still a few more which I will show to you in the later tests. All right, so that's about the uh, first test, and let's now develop the remaining two test cases.